1800 hours pakistan standard time assalamu alaikum this is radio pakistan the news read by sumaira kamal the headlines first prime minister has directed the administrations of 22 high risk districts of polio cases to take emergency steps for eradication of the crippling disease Minister for Planning and Development has commended the efforts of all the federating units for achieving the milestone of administering 1 million anti-covid vaccines per day. Pakistan says India has consistently scuttled the efforts of for a constructive and meaningful dialogue in its neighborhood. The United States has appreciated Pakistan's efforts to advance Afghan peace process and stability in South Asia by encouraging Taliban to engage in substantive negotiations. United Arab Emirates has announced to lift ban on transit passenger traffic from Pakistan and some other countries from Thursday. The last T20 of four match series between Pakistan and West Indies is being played at Guyana today. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Imran Khan has directed the administrations of 22 high-risk districts of polio cases to take emergency steps for eradication of the crippling disease. Chairing a virtual meeting of provincial chief secretaries and deputy commissioners for control of polio today, he asked them to take full advantage of the reduced number of cases reported in the country and work towards its complete elimination. The meeting was attended by special assistants to Prime Minister Dr. Faisal Sultan, Dr. Shahbaz Gill and other senior officers. The Prime Minister was informed that no polio case was reported during last 6 months across the country which provides a rare opportunity to eradicate the disease from the country. President Dr. Arif Alvi says Balochistan provides best access to Central Asian states for enhancing trade and economic relations with these countries. Talking to parliamentarians in Quetta today he said Gwadar has a great significance in China Pakistan economic corridor project. The president emphasized the need to focus on equipping the youth of the country with modern skills in view of the CPAC. He said there are ample opportunities for development of agriculture, fisheries and livestock sectors in Balochistan and we have to take steps in the right direction and ensure prudent use of available resources. Finance Minister Shoko Tarin has reaffirmed the government's commitment to facilitate poor farmers by providing them timely inputs in order to boost agriculture productivity. Talking to Minister for Energy Hamad Azhar in Islamabad today, he said the key focus is to revitalize agriculture sector of the country by stimulating rural productivity and farm income. Both ministers reviewed the supply and stocks of urea fertilizers for the farmers. Secretary Industries and Production gave a detailed presentation about production of urea fertilizer and also updated about the sufficient stock of fertilizer to cater to requirements in the upcoming sowing season. Minister for Planning and Development Asad Umar says the the target of 1 million vaccinations in a day has been achieved. In his tweets today he said over 1.7 million vaccinations were carried out yesterday. The minister commended the performance of all the federating units to achieve this milestone. Minister of State for Information and Broadcasting Farooq Habib has urged religious scholars of different schools of thought to continue to play their role for unity and harmony in society to foil conspiracies of the enemy. Addressing an ulama convention in Islamabad today he warned that the enemy always tries to exploit our false lines to stoke anarchy. Farooq Habib said the ulama have an added responsibility to counter the hybrid warfare launched by India against Pakistan. He said we have to take forward Pegham-e Pakistan code of conduct bearing signatures of about 18 religious scholars for peace and stability in the country. The state minister said EU disinfo lab recently exposed as to how India was involved in propaganda campaign and spreading fake news against Pakistan through social media. Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf candidate Anwarul Haq was elected as Speaker Choudhry Riaz as Deputy Speaker of Azad Jammu and Kashmir Legislative Assembly today. Both of them secured 32 votes against the joint candidates of PPP and PMLN who got 15 votes. Later both the speakers and the deputy speaker took oath of their offices. Earlier the newly elected members of the legislative assembly also took oath of their offices. 
election for leader of the house will be held tomorrow this is radio pakistan Foreign Office spokesperson Zahid Afiz Choudhury says India has consistently scuttled any effort for a constructive and meaningful dialogue in its neighborhood. In response to media queries on the Indian External Affairs Minister's tweet regarding India's priorities during the presidency of the UN Security Council, he said before preaching moderation to world India must set its own house in order. The spokesperson said the extremist Hindutva ideology has permeated all state institutions of India and RSS BJP regime's record is replete with instances of gross systematic violations of the rights of minorities in particular Muslims. He said on assuming office Prime Minister Imran Khan clearly underlined that if India would take one step for peace Pakistan would take two. However, rather than engaging in dialogue, India vitiated the environment through its illegal and unilateral actions of 5, 5th August 2019. The Foreign Office spokesperson said India remains in clear violation of international law and the UN Security Council resolutions for more than 7 decades. Pakistan has dismissed India's claim that Jammu and Kashmir is its integral part. In a statement Pakistan's permanent representative to the United Nations Munir Akram said talks with India would be fruitful once New Delhi reverse, reverses its nearly 2 year old illegal action to end the special status of the disputed territory. Munir Akram said India's unilateral and illegal actions of 5th August 2019 to annex Jammu and Kashmir are null and void and as it violated two resolutions of the UN Security Council earlier at his press briefing in his capacity as president of the UN Security Council india representative t s tirmurthy claimed that jammu and kashmir is an integral and inalienable part of the india the united states has appreciated pakistan's efforts to advance the afghan peace process and stability in south asia including by encouraging the taliban to engage in substantive negotiations at his regular press briefing in washington the us state Dev- department spokesperson ned price said pakistan has much to gain and will continue to have a critical role in supporting an outcome that not only the united states seeks but many of their international partners also seek The spokesperson said the United States also continue to work to communicate closely with Pakistani partners in this regard. In Afghanistan, 9 Taliban have been killed and 6 other injured after Afghan Air Force targeted their positions in Uruzgan province. Meanwhile, an Afghan general has been warned of devastating consequences for global security if Taliban win in their fight against government forces. In, a, in, in an interview with BBC, General Sami Sadat stated that while government forces have lost ground, he believes that Taliban would be unable to sustain their assault. The United Arab Emirates has announced to lift ban on transit passenger traffic from Pakistan, India, Nigeria and other countries from Thursday. Earlier, the UAE, a major international travel hub, has banned passengers from many South Asian and African countries for several months due to the coronavirus pandemic. The last T20 of four match series between Pakistan and the West Indies is being played at Guyana today. The match will start at 8 p.m. Pakistan Standard Time. Pakistan is leading the series 1-0 as the two matches were abandoned due to rain. China is leading the Tokyo Olympics with 32 gold, 20 silver and 16 bronze medals. The United States is at second position with 23 gold, 27 silver and 20 bronze medals, while Japan is at third position with 19 gold, 6 silver and 11 bronze medals. And finally, the weather. Mainly hot and humid weather is likely to prevail in most parts of the country during the next 12 hours. However, rain with wind and thunder shower with isolated heavy falls is expected in Potohar region, northeast Punjab, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Gilgit, Baltistan and Kashmir. And that is the end of the news. For more news and analyses, log on to our website radio.gov.in.